My name is Dr. Alex Lampin-Smith. I'm a gastroenterologist and liver specialist and clinical director of the Hepatitis Foundation of New Zealand. From this session, I hope that you'll gain an understanding of the information required to make treatment decisions for your patients with Hepatitis B. It would be useful if you've also got an understanding of the blood tests used to monitor Hepatitis B, which was covered in session two of this series. To make treatment decisions in Hepatitis B, you need to take into account a number of factors and these can be considered in the three categories of patient factors, virus factors, and liver factors. From the perspective of the patient, it is important to consider how long they may have had the infection, and for most people, this will be answered by how old they are. Acquisition is usually at the time of birth or at a young childhood age. Males tend to have more advanced liver disease than females, and this can sometimes affect treatment decisions. It is also useful to know whether there has been a family history of hepatitis B related liver cancer or hepatocellular carcinoma or HCC for short, as if this risk factor is present then the thresholds for treatment should be lower. Cofactors for progressive liver disease should also be taken into account and this includes alcohol use, presence of obesity or fatty liver disease and co-infection with other viruses such as HIV, hepatitis C or hepatitis delta. Other medical conditions that may involve the patient taking chemotherapy or immune, immunosuppressive medications should also be taken into account. From the perspective of the virus, it is useful to know whether the person is E antigen positive or E antigen negative, as this donates a more active or less active form of the virus. The hepatitis B viral load is the next test that needs to be done. This is a quantitative test that gives a measure of how much virus is present currently in that person's blood. It can be anywhere between zero and greater than a million. If it's less than 2,000, we consider that to be a relatively low level, and if it's greater than a million, it's considered to be quite high. There are no specific cutoffs between these two levels, but it is useful to consider what range it is in. It does change over time, so it might be useful to perform the virus count a number of years apart. From this perspective of the liver, it is important to determine whether there is any inflammation actively ongoing at this time, and this would be determined by the liver blood tests. If the ALT and AST are persistently elevated, this would suggest ongoing active inflammation. To determine the degree of damage that has been caused in the liver over time, we need to make an assessment of the degree of liver fibrosis. Clinical examination should be performed to see whether there are any clinical stigmata of chronic liver disease suggestive of established cirrhosis. Testing, including abdominal ultrasound scan and fibro scan, can also be done to assess any degree of damage present in the liver. A fibro scan test is a very important test used to assess liver disease, and this will be further discussed in another one of our sessions. Treatment should be considered for people that have evidence of ongoing active inflammation, and this is to prevent progressive liver disease and to reduce the risk of liver cancer. The hepatitis B virus is one of the most serious causes of cancer known around the world. And most liver cancer, or HCC, is caused by the hepatitis B virus. People should be treated if there is high levels of the virus, anything above 2000, and presence of active inflammation or damage in the liver. So an elevated ALT and or advanced fibrosis is seen on fibroscan or ultrasound. Many people with chronic hepatitis B do not need treatment. They have low levels of the virus, normal liver enzymes, and no evidence of fibrosis on Fibroscan. For these people, blood test monitoring six monthly is recommended by international guidelines. Disease state can change over time, so even if they don't need treatment now, they may do so at some point in the future, and it would be important to recognise that and commence treatment at that time. The main antiviral treatments for hepatitis B available in New Zealand at this time are Antigavir and Tenofovir. These are both very effective and very safe antiviral medications. They suppress the hepatitis B virus to low or undetectable levels. And when there has been active inflammation present in the liver from the virus, this is usually immediately improved and it can be seen as the ALT usually falls to normal levels. Both of these tablets for most people are one tablet once a day long term and for the majority of patients treatment will need to be long term. 
There are certain situations where treatment can be discontinued, but this should only be performed under direct supervision and advice from a gastroenterology or infectious diseases specialist. If treatment is interrupted, the virus can rebound, and for people with advanced liver disease, this can cause significant illness and should be avoided. So in summary, to assess your patient and make treatment decisions for hepatitis B, you need to take into account patient factors, virus factors and liver factors. For those people where the virus is elevated and there is ongoing damage in the liver, treatment should be commenced. Intecovir and tenofovir are very safe medicines and are usually required long term. Advice should be sought prior to stopping treatment.